Now, before we get started, I just wanted to say that I don't even own a Roland Boutique synth. In fact, this rack doesn't belong to me either. I'm about to give it to a mate of mine that these synths belong to. I asked to borrow them recently, but actually what I was doing was making sure that I had the sizes right for this custom rack I was building. It's his birthday coming up. I wanted to surprise him. He's always been complaining about the fact that he doesn't use these boutiques enough because they're just kind of a little bit awkward to set up in the studio and because he's got three of them, kind of needs a little bit of space to set them up. So I had a little bit of like scrap material lying around the studio here and uh, decided to throw together a little custom rack. It's kind of based off some uh, ideas that I found on the internet and in my stubbornness I kind of thought yeah I could do that yeah I mean it turned out really good I'm actually really happy with the results but it was a lot of work and uh, involved a lot of tools in the process of doing this I kind of wish that I documented things a little bit better I ended up just taking a few photos along the way of the process of me building this and I thought I'd just talk you through how uh, how I built this rack and if you were kind of curious or you wanted to sort of tackle this project yourself i'm thinking about releasing some like rough sketches and plans and like a material list on my website so by the time this video drops there should be something on my website just head over to mrrollo.com slash shop you can download a free plan which i haven't even done yet but pretty sure i will I think the whole Roland Boutique line is absolutely genius to kind of re-release limited numbers of these classic machines. I've only had very limited experience with them myself. I've played around a little bit with these guys since I've had them in my studio here. Like I said before, I don't actually own any of them. I think if I was actually going to buy one, I've already got like a TR-8 drum machine, so I don't really have a use for the TR-09 or the TR-08 but I would definitely get the JU06. This thing is absolutely beautiful. Straight away, I was just taken away like back to the 80s and could see myself making like the Stranger Themes tune or something. I would snap one of these up if I saw it for sale in a second. So yeah, my mate's birthday is coming up and I really wanted to surprise him with this custom rack because uh, I thought it would really be a nice addition to his studio. He's been working pretty hard on it lately. So uh, let's kind of go through it. Um, like I said, I didn't really document it as well as I would have liked to, but I did actually just take some photos along the way so I can kind of like talk you through my process and the materials I use, the tools. And uh, yeah, you just might find it interesting if you wanted to take this project on yourself. So my studio is based in a really industrial area of Hong Kong. We're based on the 10th floor here and it's not really appropriate in the studio or around the studio to be like whipping out my tools and like cutting up plywood and stuff. So I ended up moving my entire operation up onto the rooftop and uh, here you can see my setup where I've just set up a couple of saw horses. These are from Ikea, which I actually use for my office desk. And then there just happened to be a few planks lying around on the rooftop. So I set these up and set my tools up and everything was looking like pretty neat to begin with. You can kind of see I've got like a uh, cordless drill here. I've also got a uh, like an impact driver drill. I've then got a circular saw. I've also got a belt sander. I bought some screwdrivers and then I just bought a milk crate like full of all sorts of hand tools like hammers and chisels and all kinds of stuff that I thought I might need. So I had a bunch of plywood left over from building this desk and my office desk and various other things around my studio. I thought that this would be a perfect medium for the sides of the rack and also the base that the synths sit on themselves. The plywood has at least like one good face and then the inside face is definitely not as nice but you can still kind of dress it up to look pretty cool. So this is where I started just sketching out where I thought the synths should go. I really just did this by eye and kind of I cut out some paper templates which were pretty much the same size of the synths. I didn't actually have the synths physically in my hands. I had to like Google everything and look up the dimensions and make sure that I got the like the length of it right, but also the height to take into consideration like the buttons and the dials and stuff. So it took a lot of head scratching just to get this right because I didn't actually have these synths in my possession. So there was a lot of trial and error, a lot of just kind of moving these templates around. I kind of cut out these paper 
templates that looked like the side of a synth, like a cross section of one of these boutiques. And then I just positioned them in a way and kind of got the angles as close as I could, keeping in mind to sort of leave enough room at the back here as well for MIDI cables or whatever you wanted to plug in the back of these guys. This step was hard, getting the angles right, getting the position right, and also so that they didn't look too out of place or like that one synth was like off on a one angle. I kind of wanted this consistency of them to sort of start here and then slowly taper out. I've also marked in here where the actual base plate was going to be sitting for all of these synths too. So that was really helpful to enable me to get the heights right. And you can see that I've left like a little lip at the top here also so that the synths look like they were kind of recessed. Right, so moving on, this is like the first piece that I cut and then I just used this piece once I'd had that initial template to mark out my second template, made it really easy. And I just cut this out with a circular saw, which is probably pretty hardcore for this job, but I didn't have access to a jigsaw, which I really would have liked. I got a few chips and, and whatnot, but uh, it kind of just adds to the kind of boutiqueness or the vintage look that I was kind of going for. So I really didn't worry too much about the materials getting damaged. So this is just a wider view of my setup and you can see that I've cut a section out of each corner of the piece of plywood that I had because I needed to get a really nice square right angle at each side. <laughs> All right, so we've kind of fast forwarded a bit here, but this is the only other photo that I have. And here we've got the three base plates now in position and I'm clamping these guys together so that I can get some screws into either side. I did pre-drill everything with plywood. You've got to be especially careful that you don't split the ply and that we don't like pop out. They're just like really thin boards that have just been glued together. So pre-drilling is an absolute must. And I also made sure to like countersink the screws too, so that when they went into the side, yeah, that they were kind of flush with the edge. I mean, they're relatively flush, pretty close. And obviously you can see that I uh, didn't have a big enough clamp. I just had these really tiny ones here. So I ended up like linking them together and using them like two clamps to create one, uh, which actually worked really well. Uh, this was pretty straightforward step. Right, so now I have my belt sander set up as well. And I actually just like turned this upside down and then clamped it to the table so that I could kind of use it like a, a proper machine belt sander rather than like holding it. And like it, it weighs a ton, it's really heavy so it's kind of nice to just have it down and then I could like sit my pieces on the belt sander just to get things nice and smooth. You can also see I've got this piece of aluminium angle which I ended up cutting up with a angle grinder which I didn't get any shots of but I cut it into three little small pieces which ended up being the front angle uh, of each one of the synths here. Right, so now it's all screwed together. It's looking pretty sweet. I think this is pre-sanding it so all of the edges are really nice and sharp still. There's also a bit of roughness around those internal corners and obviously we can still see a lot of the pencil marks on the inside of the rack. And then this next image here is, I think this is post sanding. Yeah, things are looking a bit smoother. I've ended up just rounding off all the corners here. Tried my best as I could to get into these internal corners, but that's really quite a challenge. And the aluminium angles have been screwed on here as well. So actually numbered these one one, two, and three so that I didn't get confused. And when I sort of pre-drilled these guys and ended up countersinking these screws in here as well, so they were nice and flush, it was just important that they went back in the right position and that I didn't accidentally mix up the order of them. And then, the, you know, they'd be a little bit off and, you know, just got to get a little bit finicky like that. All right. So next picture is downstairs in my disgusting shower that we have here in the studio. But this is where I ended up putting a wood stain on the rack. So I didn't want to leave the pale looking plywood finish. Uh, I really wanted to stain it a bit more sort of moody studio classic kind of look. So I found a, um, uh, I found some wood stain. It was super cheap. It was like five or $6 or something. The guys did recommend using like a towel or a rag, you know, to sort of like dab it on there and like rub it in there. But I ended up just using a paintbrush because I thought it was just way easier. I don't know, the finish came out really, really good. It sort of took a bit of getting used to because you get quite attached to the finish of like when you see this nicely sanded piece of timber and then you go ahead and like slap a stain on it. You're like, oh shit, what have I done? You know, you kind of ruined it. But I ended up 
just absolutely loving the finish and I wouldn't have it any other way now. Now with wood stain, it's not a finish. Uh, wood stain is just a stain. So it's just going to color your timber, but it's not actually going to finish the timber. So after that, I ended up just painting with a clear water-based like acrylic kind of finish, wood finish, which gave a really nice kind of matte finish to everything, which, uh, you know, has really finished everything off. And I think I said finish about five or six times then. All right. So whilst my rack stain was drying and the wood finish that I put on it too, I uh, went back up to the roof with my pieces of angle and then ended up spraying them six or seven times. I started with a, uh, like a primer first, just a steel primer, because this is aluminium angle. I was just a bit cautious of going straight on with some black paint so i wanted to prime them first so i found like a steel primer which uh it was like a red oxide or something so that was went on first a couple of coats of the red oxide and then three or four coats of this black paint and i think i've got a zoomed in shot here also so you can see like it was a supposedly a matte finish but it turned out quite glossy but uh i actually don't mind it i think it looks really sick so we're back onto my office desk here which is looking nice and messy this this is where uh, I just started putting things back together, putting the screws. I just sort of pulled the screws out when I put the stain on um, just so that I could get around the screw head and like get in underneath that too. Here you can see the black angles which are still kind of drying at this stage um, but they're kind of ready to screw on and you can see that the wood stain and the wood finish just looks really awesome now. All right, and so here's pretty much the finished product. We've now got the angle screwed in there. We've also got the screws on the side have been, you know, re-screwed in, so they're nice and flush. And I also put like some little rubber grommet feet on the bottom of this guy. I actually just picked up these little rubber things from uh, like a plumbing supply shop and they were about like two cents each or something. And then I just used my wife's hot glue gun to just stick them on the base and they seem to work really, really well and just keep things just a little bit elevated. You could probably slip like a little micro USB cable underneath this, which is kind of perfect because that's what these guys take. And finally, with all the synths in place, I actually called my mate and said, man, can I borrow your boutiques because I want to make a YouTube video on them? Little did he know that they were actually for this video where I was gonna be showing off the rack that I built for him. So buddy, happy birthday. The synth rack's for you, man. I hope you like it. So all in all, this project cost me upwards of around $12 US. It was super cheap, mostly because I just had leftover materials lying around the house. And I also had access to some nice tools as well. I would have liked to have access to a few nicer tools and also like a proper workshop where I could have done this a little bit nicer, but I'm actually super happy with the result. And the fact that it's like a little bit rough and there's a few chips in it and things kind of just adds to that boutiqueness, I think, which is kind of what I was going for in the first place. I'll put up a full list of the materials, the tools, and the expenses and I'll even put in some plans for you so if you did want to tackle a project like this you'll have a pretty good starting point. Would I recommend doing this? Yeah, totally. If you've got like three or four days to kind of dedicate to it because you've kind of got to do some work, wait a little while, do a little bit more work, wait a little while as you're waiting for things like the paint to dry or the stain to dry or like the wood finish as well. Plus I also, when I put the wood finish on and then I would sand it and then I put the finish on and then I'd sand that and then put another finish on and then sand that again. So it's kind of a lengthy process that you'd have to space out over a few days, but it's totally worth it. Anyway, that's it from me today, guys. I just want to show you about this project that's been keeping me relatively busy over the past couple of weeks. I'm really happy with the result and I would totally do it again. I'm just trying to think about what other synths or gear that I could house within some sort of a rack using just leftover recycled materials. If you do end up tackling this project or something similar, then definitely send me a picture. You can hit me up on Instagram at Mr. Ed Rollo. I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to see your own projects because uh, this stuff's tons of fun. I love just getting out of the studio and just like working with my hands. It's easy to just get stuck in this space and like never leave and never see the light of day. So if you did like this video, then please remember to subscribe. It really does help. And be sure to give this video a thumbs up also. Until next time, keep creating. Bye for now.